I say, bring on Martha Reeves. That's what I say too. We are honored to have one of my favorite legends and favorite singers and favorite people in the world. Say hello to Martha Reeves. Hi, baby. Hello. So excited. Let me introduce you to Hi, Drew. It's a, uh, Meet Drew. How you doing? If you ever want to spin a, spin a wheel, let me know. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> have you been? Have you been, Martha? It's been a little. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Yes, it has. I'm so happy today that we're doing this. this is my first time ever attempting to be on. What do you call this? What do you call this, Steve? A web, webcast kind of. The webcast. Okay, first time ever did, doing this, and and I appreciate the privilege, and I appreciate my friends uh, Kim and 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 Chris Cease who were able to hook us up. Yes. Okay. We so so we, we all need younger people to hook us up. We're in good. We're in good hands here. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, we're, uh, we're all about education, and, and we talk about it all the time. But uh, these days, there's not so much education uh, of the arts, you know. So, so you, but you had a didn't you, didn't you have like a vocal coach or something in, in in high school? All my life, I've been around beautiful vocalists who were eager to teach me. Starting first with my mom and dad, and uh -huh. uh, we're the generation before television, so a uh -huh. lot of times we would enjoy uh, my dad taking the guitar down off the wall when he felt like it, and and mom singing songs to make us go to sleep at night. Wow! And, um, watching the radio, we used to sit and watch Lo the Lone Ranger and Gabriel <laughs> Heater and uh, the name was <laughs> Andy, but <laughs> but uh, growing up musical, musically uh, endowed, I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, wow. I think my first performance was at the age of three with my older brother Thomas and Benny. Benny is known all over the world because he played he played to all the USO clubs while he was in the military. We're a Navy family, wow. and um, I won. We won candy, and I was three. Thomas was four. Benny was six, and uh, we won chocolate covered cherries. And they let me have control of the chocolate covered cherries. That's when I knew I was special. <laughs> I was singing backup for them, but if they weren't kind to me, they could get any candy on a daily basis. <laughs> I would hoard the candy. And it gave me a little leadership personality. And uh, so, so mom, mom taught me special time uh, how to recite poems for church and to sing all of these gospel songs that, uh, that I know that are indebted in my heart. My grandfather being a, Meth a Methodist minister. Uh -huh. And uh, Right. Having, having the joy of the Lord, uh, going to elementary school, Emily Wagstaff was a teacher in elementary school who found out that I could retain lyrics and I could sing some of the songs she adored. So at the end of the class, she would stop and let me sing maybe the last five minutes of the class. And um, songs like all of the anthems, like the you know, uh, Star Spangled Banner and uh, God Bless America, My Country Tis of These, those, those kind of songs. And Only a Rose, she taught me, was one of her favorites. And This Is My Country. And that sort of straightened me out mentally because I'd been told prior to that that I should go back to Africa, if you know what I'm saying. But she let me know that we're Americans and uh, uh, leave there a man with soul so dead who never to himself has said, this is my own, my native land, this is my native land. Songs like that brought me from there to high school. Wow. And Silver in high school chose me out of 11 girls. In the in the first soprano section to sing box aria, then I know I was somewhere wow. in somebody because at the Henry Ford Auditorium, which is now torn down, and it broke my heart to see it demolished. But the Henry Ford it was a great theater with the acoustically perfect, and I sang box aria, the Alleluia. Wow! And I, wow. I've been messed up since then when because I heard forty five hundred people um, applaud, and that hooked me. Yeah. I knew I was gonna have to sing or something. And you were, and you were never, it never, you were never nervous about singing, huh? right, right from the beginning. I mean, never, no, never nervous. I, I think when I was three, my um, godmother took me to see Lena Horne, and I fell mm -hmm. in love with her. Mm -hmm. This beautiful woman standing behind an umbrella 
in the rain singing the blues. And I said in my heart, she's too pretty to have the blues. <laughs> There's no sun up in the sky, stormy weather. And I, said, I want to do that. I want to make somebody feel like she made me feel singing. Wow. So my heart is, I'm a bird. Okay. <laughs> when am I going to retire? Because I'm on my 79th year now. And uh, I'm a bird. I'll fall off the limb. Wow. I'll wow, just, wow. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing till I die. <laughs> <laughs> you, still, you still sing in church? All all the time. Mostly wow. from, mostly from the pews though, because I'm not actively in any choir at the time. But you know, I sing every day. I sing my scriptures. Do they bug you in the church? Like you should join the choir again, Martha. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have Martha Reeves in your choir. <laughs> well, you know why? There are a lot of Martha Reeves in those choirs. <laughs> really is. I was, I, yeah, I was singing their hearts out, and it's all influenced by the Holy Spirit. So it's a lot of girls singing and a lot of guys singing in, in church, and they don't really need old me. I got I, plus I got my gospel album that I want to get released sooner or later. I'm inspired. I, I did record my testimony. Oh. Yeah. Being reborn in 77, I had I had written the, my testimony out, but then I got a chance to sing it with some beautiful producers. Al McKenzie, now gone to heaven, helped me get all of the songs out of my heart. And I, and I did like it's a gospel Christmas album. I hope that I released. But, you know, I'm not as clever as Barry Gordy. So <laughs> you could get his albums played. <laughs> distributed. In fact, we used to sit up in, in the studio and... Uh, package things. After we do sessions, we'd go to this little flat when he lived upstairs of Hitsville, USA. Mm -hmm. and we would package things and send them off to distributors. So wow. Uh, so, so so let's go back for a minute. Um, mm. uh, was it Mickey Stevenson, I, I think, that, that uh, kind of found you at the 20 grand? Or is that, is that story correct? Yeah, Barry had a habit of sending scouts out all over the city. They got the best of the talent. They got the best of musicians. Most of the musicians were jazz cats. And when they came into the studio, they would actually be good arrangers and they could cut sessions all day long until the union came in. But uh, I was singing a happy hour. I'd won an amateur contest. There was, they were big in the city at the Warfield Theater. Just about everybody at Motown had once competed at the Warfield Theater during the, during the, uh, oh, wow. the year. And um, I won a contest. My reward was three nights at a place called the 20 Grand. It was one of our biggest nightclubs. It's now defunct. Everybody that was famous played the, the 20 Grand. And um, after my third night, Sunday night, I had to get home before 12. So I was trying to hurry up and get out of there. This man approached me. Oh, he was so sharp. This man had on a silk suit and he had a studs and shoes. You know how they used to take the white shoe polish and go around the stitches of the shoes? Those studs and shoes? That was wow. all. Oh, that was old, old school, old style. Anyway, wow. so he, you know, his hair finger waved. I mean, it was, he was bad. And uh, <laughs> he walked with me. I thought I had been, I thought I met my Prince Charming. <laughs> you know, singers, I, I got to tell the secret. Most singers are singing for love. They want somebody to one day come and say, oh, you are, you're my heart's desire. I'll take you off to paradise and we would be with you forever we have that in our heart that we're going to meet that person that that's the passion of, of soul music right it comes from first you're singing to god right and they call it gospel and then when you start singing to men or women then it, it turns into soul right I mean, that's intense that's yeah. why that's why soul music is so intense you know it's, it's the most right. intense when it comes to romantic songs you know it comes to relationship songs and nothing like soul music you know that's right so this man approaches me right and he gives me a card and says, you have talent. Come to Hitsville, USA. <laughs> the card said that? Hitsville, the card. USA. It wasn't Motown until the label made hits. In the beginning, it was just Hitsville. And mm -hmm. he gave me a card and said, come to Hitsville. So I took the card home to my dad. I was living in his house at 21. I had left home before, but when I caught pneumonia, dad made me move back in. Mm -hmm. Said, you can't leave until you have a job and a place to live. So I'm going home to my dad and I give him the card and I said, dad, look, I got a card last night. He said, it looks like you've been discovered. Quit your job at the dry cleaning. Call wow. him in the morning, tell him you're not coming in and go and see about that, that card and that invitation. Right. The bus was from the east side to the west side was yeah. called the Grand Belt. 
it doesn't happen anymore because there are no houses along the way. So they make you go downtown before you can get to Hitsville from the east side. But I rode that bus and he said, get off at the 2400 block. And so when I got off, when I saw the 2400 block, it, the bus stopped right in front of Hitsville. So I see this house with this hand painted sign. I started to get back on that bus with my transfer and go back to the east side. <sighs> so I said, all those people standing out front must be there for a reason. It was like American Idol's uh, you know, call. People were standing there waiting for their audition on the third Thursday of the month. Wow. Uh -huh. William Stevenson was in there. So I went inside and spoke to the young lady on the desk, Juana Royster. She said, may I help you? I said, yes, may I see Mr. Stevenson? She said, you mean Mickey? I said, oh yeah, that's what you call him. <laughs> she buzzed the door and on the other side of that door in this house was Mickey Stevenson. Had on the same clothes he had on that night before. <laughs> <laughs> he had taken off his jacket, loosened <laughs> his tie, and uh, so, his, his hair was kind of not neat anymore. Okay. But he had been all night writing a song for this drummer named Marvin Gaye. It was wow. that kind of house. Music made 24 hours. Wow. Seven days a week. Very gorgeous house. A music machine. Wow. And uh, I wasn't announced. He didn't get any kind of notice that I was coming. Hmm. He asked me, what are you doing here? I said, what do you mean, what am I doing there? You gave me a card last night and said, come to this company. He said, yeah, but you're supposed to take the card and call for an audition. Hmm. You know, I said, okay, what do I do? He says, answer this phone. I'll be right back. I started answering the phone. Hello, may I help you in our department? Who is this? Oh, Martha Reeves, may I help you? <laughs> <Where>? <laughs> Oh, he said he'd be right. Mr. Stevenson said he'd be right back. May I help you? I started taking notes because of my commercial course. And I tell all my students when I visit schools, and I do that quite often, I tell them, learn everything they want to teach you in school because you're going to use it in your life. My first recording happened to be a demo that was planned for Mary Wells. She was going to uh, leave right. the company the minute uh, my guy hit. I didn't know that. When they asked me to sing that song, when the union man made a surprise visit, Barry had been told, put somebody on those mics. Have somebody sing it if you're making a track. Oh, right, right, right. That was, a, that was a union rule, right? Well, the union guys had gone and said, Barry's got to pay us union scales. Because if they're making song after song after song, they weren't getting paid the appropriate amount. I'll put it that way. <laughs> so when the union came in, somebody needed to be on the mic as he had been ordered. So Mickey, Mr. Stevenson, I mean, came to the door and said, Martha, come and sing this song because I've been making demos all along. And um, I sang, I'll have to let him go. Mary Wells was supposed to sing that song, but unfortunately she had some other person to talk her away from Motown. And uh, so when she left, Barry heard me sing it. I had brought my friends, Rosalind, Annette, and Gloria in from the Delphi, the group that I previously sang with, and we had broken up because all of us had to have jobs after high school. I mm -hmm. think I called Rosalind from the telephone company uh, and that was working at a soda fountain and Gloria was working for the city of Detroit. She was not about to quit her job and sign a contract. So she never signed with Motown. But Gloria was the leader of the group and she taught us all harmonies. She was a choir director at her church and she played piano fluently. And mm -hmm. uh, we had a good teacher in her. Anyway, we had to continue. So after singing A Stubborn Kind of Fellow with Marvin Gaye and looking at this fine man and standing behind him, we all, you know, it was a four track recorder at that time. We all stood on the mic with him and we could touch him and, and flip with him. <laughs> <laughs> we got wait, some wait, fine stuff wait, and wait, kind of Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you all sang around the same mic? That's it. We, we were all on that same mic, one take. You have to Holy do one take. Miracle. On a four track recorder, you ain't got time. Everybody can't be singled out. You got to get it right. So we went through, doo -doo, oh, yeah, 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 because he was so fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you can hear it, you can hear it. So Marvin tried to this had been singing ballads, right? He did. I have to give that, that another listen. When we're <laughs> bring me a dream. He had recorded that. That was well, his first recording on Motown. Well, Marvin wanted to be Frank Sinatra, right? I've ever seen one of those kind of songs. So when we got to him, he went, oh, say now, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to listen to it again and realize <laughs> that we're standing there touching him. And yeah, 
<laughs> flirting with him and no singing our hearts out and making him sing. We made Marvin come from somewhere he had never planned to come. <laughs> and then that, we did we did Hitchhike. Good. And we did Pride and Joy. Wow. Wow. And then all the other girls at no time wanted to sing with Marvin Gaye, so they kind of like moved aside of the way we were gonna be. Our first gig was at the, the state fair with the Beach Boys. They let us open the show for them, and it was Marvin and the Vandellas. Come and get these memories was just about to hit. But Stephen kind of fell a hat hit. Believe it or not, we sang on every show behind Marvin Gaye. He never paid us a dime. Wow. Never paid us a dime because we loved him. So, you know, we were flirting oh. and stuff. So we'd be glad to sing behind Marvin every show, especially that 94 One Nighter first with um, Motown Review. 94 One Nighters on a bus with 12 other acts and a 12 piece band. Wow. Of our lives. But when we got back to Detroit, all of our records had hit, Stevie. So Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Ni 91 Nighters. 94. 94. That's and how, how many days were you on the road then? Four months? 90, three months. That's three months. 94 oh, days. Oh, you just like one, one night after the other. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my that had no toilet. Oh, geez. Wow. A broken down treadway. I wish it had been a Greyhound. <laughs> yeah, Greyhound always had the better rep than Trailways, didn't oh, it? Oh, they had better buses. <laughs> yeah, they did. That's a Greyhound back in the day. And, and Martha, what, what would you do? Like, you do like three songs each, or, or, or how many songs? Believe it or not, anybody that wasn't the star only got to do two songs. Two songs. Yes, and the star would sing maybe four, because it was a long show and it was, you know, it was timed. We had to hurry up and do the show before the venue would shut. Or before the bus driver would say, "Hey, okay, I'm pulling out." <laughs> they, were, they, they were scheduled too. So, who, so, so, who, who's on? Who's on this tour now? Is this Stevie Wonder's on the tour? Yeah, the baby was on that tour, and he was only like eight years old. And um, the wow. thing I want to remember, and I, I, you know, Stevie doesn't like me telling this, so I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> I'm breaking the rules. We'll if keep anyone, it to ourselves. We'll keep it to if ourselves. Anyone was sleeping or snoring. Stevie had a tendency to find them and just slap them to wake them up. Because <laughs> an eight-year-old child would probably be out somewhere playing, you know, <laughs> during the day. And these guys, we would take turns singing the groups practicing our songs, and uh, the snoring just didn't fit in. So Stevie would wake them up, slap them, have them really <laughs> drunk, <laughs> sleeping over hangovers or whatever. They wow. had a, so they so take a nap. So, you know, well, on the bus, we did take our we did take our sleeping time on the bus, traveling from place to place. Wow! And so, so Martha, you got you got ninety four one nighters. Was there were there any hotels? We only stayed in two hotels. One was in the south, and it was horrible. Uh, uh, then we we had a Holiday Inn visit, and that showed us what hotels could be like. But the rest of the the ninety two days or nights. We're spent sleeping on that bus. Oh my goodness! Man, I learned how to get my head next to the window. I always insisted on being at the window, and and I could ride and sleep like that. That's then, my then, bug. Then, those wigs then, on, then, with those wigs on. But yeah, <laughs> and what? And, what, and <laughs> what, washed up at the gigs? Yes, we would wash our underwear at the beginning of the sound check and hope they dry by the time we done our show and get ready to go to the next stop. <laughs> we, always had, we always had arenas where there were showers. Most of the places where, you know, sports were held. And we would do our showering there. We stayed wow. pretty clean under the circumstance. But we weren't allowed in, in, the, in the toilets and, and things in the South. In the so, hotels. So that, that's mind boggling, honestly. I can't believe I'm talking to somebody alive that had to live through something like that. It's mind boggling. Oh, school. Oh, school. Oh, school. Yeah. <laughs> used to call it the Chitlin circuit. So just for the record, this show, the show had like Smokey Robinson and the Miracles and the Temptations and the Four Tops yes. and the yes. Marvelous and the Supremes and yes. and CB Wonder, Marvin Gaye, Contours, all, all, all of them, yeah. all of them. Jim Weston, Miracles, yeah. What a show! Bus. Not yeah. an empty seat. No land down here. Man, oh man. Wow. Amazing, amazing. 
by this record had started when we got back to Detroit. So Barry knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. So then you you, you went off on your own and, and uh, uh, man, I, I I love you doing that Van Morrison Wild Nights. Boy, that was fantastic. Hey, okay. I loved it when Gina Davis put her her suitcase in the back. Seat of Thelma and Louise, and, and they played Wild Night. That was a real thrill. <laughs> yeah. Never met Van Morrison, though. It's a dream to meet him one day. Oh, wow. Hey, can, can I ask a, like a stupid question from an outsider? When you were doing your gig at the 20 Grand and yeah. you didn't have any songs written for you then or anything like that, what song did you sing? Standards or yes. jazz standards, blue standards? Like, what was your set list? Like, how many songs did you do? Did was there a little band that you had to like ad lib it with? Did you have any rehearsal time? Or did they just Levi, know everything? There was a Levi Mann trio, three guys, a bass, drums, and piano. And Levi played the organ. And uh, I didn't have any charts and didn't know what I was doing really, but I knew that I could sing the blues because my dad taught me to sing the blues. So I sang Jen House Blues. And most of my keys were G. I did Fly Me to the Moon because I idolized Dinah Washington and, and, um, Ella Fitzgerald and Lena Horn and I listened to Nancy Wilson. So I could sing Fly Me to the Moon. What, what got you into politics, Martha? Well, this has slowed down a little bit. And because I go to schools and because I'm involved with a lot of the uh, city council people. Marianne. So being involved with the city council and seeing how they were trying to help the schools and uh, having a vested interest in showing that public school teachers were Perfect. They were diligent. They were the best people in the world. They were your second parents when I went to school. And mm -hmm. I know how important it is to communicate with the students because I would probably wouldn't be a singer had it not been for Emily Wagstaff. Let me sing five minutes before the class was over. A lot of things happened while I was doing my four years between 2005 to 2009. Um, our, our mayor even was jailed. And my goal was to get the children trained during the summer and even start a city record company like Barry Gordy did. I find the mm -hmm. talent still, mm. still full of talent. The, Detroit's still full of talent. Barry Gordy's uh, struck that goal and over 40 acts were made famous right there at Hitsville, USA, which is being turned now into Motown, Motown Museum. They're uh, tearing down some of the old houses and making one big building now. Uh, we had nothing but music. Uh, I had no hopes of being anything coming out of the ghetto on the east side where I lived, except to want to be a singer. I couldn't imagine going to college because there was no money for college. So, yeah. so well, is, there, is there still arts classes in, in the high schools? Is, is there still some arts? You know, do they have a presence? Do you know, do, do, do you know still, no. still in high school? No, we have some schools now that are professionally uh, teaching uh, musical schools, but in public school, no. Uh, they've, taken, they've taken the sports and the and the music out of the, out of our schools, out of our yeah. public schools. Yeah, see, that's 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 why we, we don't started. Have enough money, you don't have enough money to go to a a technical school, then you, you won't get the training that we got as children in music. A shame. Yes, it's that's a shame. A, that's why we started our Teach Rock, you know, music history curriculum. You know, we we started it for that very reason because it, it's the same story in every single public school in America. You know. If they took the arts out, you know? Yes. Bless your heart. Yeah. You need it so badly. Occupy yeah. their minds with music and there won't be such so much violence. Exactly. Exactly. And plus it'll keep kids in school instead of dropping out. You know, that's what we find. Amen. And dropping out is violence. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, good to see you, Martha. You just well, keep well, it's such rocking. a pleasure. Yeah. Such a pleasure, Martha. Honestly, oh, what an honor. Thank you. That's a thrill. This is an absolute thrill. And this is my first one. All right. There'll be many more. There'll be many more. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege.